when a family member dies, it's tough on everyone, but things can often get tougher when a disagreements begin about the deceased's will. Sadly for Debbie McGee, that's exactly what's happened since her husband Paul passed away. Paul's eldest son has publicly branded Debbie a false witch and has accused her of cutting him out of his father's will, a claim she strongly denies. Debbie joins us now to give her side of the story. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Colleen. Good to see you, um, Debbie. Good to see you. Thank but you. sad in these circumstances. Yeah. I mean, for anybody that hasn't read the paper or knows the actual story, could you give mm. us an idea well, of what's going on? Um, first of all, I'd just like to say that I just felt I had to say my side of it um, because um, if I don't stop it now, it's going to continue. Mm. And it's not fair on me, but it's also not fair on the family, on Paul's grandchildren and his other two sons. Um, but the, tr the truth is, um, he put in the papers that I cut him out of the will, that I closed the shop that he was working in um, and sort of left him destitute and I haven't given him enough redundancy money. Um, and what actually happened was that I closed the shop because it's losing thousands and thousands of pounds. Annually. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and to keep it going monthly is a lot of money. And when somebody dies, um, when it's going through probate, which can take a few years mm. sometimes, yeah. all the money's frozen. So you don't actually have access to any savings or anything. And so I, cl I, closed, I went up and closed the shop very quickly because I'd been with the accountant, we'd done all the figures. And this is where Paul Jr. was working when yes. he was running the shop. And I paid him two months um, <coughs> salary, so I knew he had two months, he could pay his rent and live like he was, and he could look for another job. And I also went to a human resources um, expert and said, you know, what redundancy do I, should I pay him? And they said, I only had to pay him two years. But I said, no, I don't want to do that. I'd like to pay him for the nine years that he's worked in the shop. So we agreed that we would pay it to him in two installments mm -hmm. because over the years, his dad always said to me that he wouldn't hand him cash because he did like to go to the pub and that it would all go on beer. May I ask you, Debbie, just mm. on that very point, I mean, yeah. did you discuss a lot of these things with Paul yes. uh, before he died, I yeah. mean, in terms of the shop? Because I think the shop was losing money for a long time, Yeah, Paul and it? I, before we went to Panto late November last year, we actually discussed the future of the shop, and mm. there's some other things going mm -hmm. on as well I'm not going to bore everyone with to do with the property there as well and put his dad had actually set it all in motion to close the shop well we talked he hadn't set that in motion there were other things mm -hmm. that Paul Junior is accusing me of but the shop situation we discussed right okay if we close it we bring we've still got six years on the lease we just have to pay the basic expenses and rent but keeping it going costs thousands more yeah. a year yeah. and did you know that this hatred had built up in with your um, no, stepson he said some horrible things about yeah him. no he's you know he's been a problem child for years and i've always been really close to the other two boys the youngest is with We've me got today, gary, gary. Yes. Here. Hi, gary. Um, Hi, gary. and yeah. paul jr paul and i his dad and i had always tried to help but he'd never been very friendly to me but he didn't show any hatred he just wasn't mm. loving like the other two but he wasn't loving he's not loving to his own mother He's not in contact with anybody else in the family. And when he says that, you know, he's had a good relationship recently with his dad, um, his Paul was a wonderful man and this was his son, so mm. I would always support him. But the relationship was to try and keep him out of trouble, but most of the time it was yelling at Paul Jr for not running the shop properly for not washing yeah. for drinking you know all the things that parents do to mm. try because you want your son do to you, be happy yeah. I mean all of this is now going on in something uh, uh, seven months is it seven yeah since, seven months since, just so over seven how, months since Paul died how are you managing I mean, you're dealing with your own grief, yeah. obviously, still. I mean, how hurtful has all this been? And it's really been horrible. And also, mostly, because um, despite the fact how awful... And he's been sending me threatening messages and all sorts. Oh. Um, I, you know, he was my late husband's son. I am not going to allow myself to hate him. No. Because I couldn't do that to his dad. If you thought that got heated, wait until you watch these and click here to subscribe. You may as well. It's totally free.